little bit of news I kind of wanted to mention. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. On the Google Plus and Picasa front, a lot of people have not liked the Google Plus photos. I keep talking about Google Plus photos because I love it, but it is integrated with the Google Plus um, social network. And, right. and a lot of people, you, you, it's, that part is hard to understand and it it's, can be annoying. Well, Google has decided for sure to unlink the Google Photos with the Google social network part. With the, They call that the stream. And just last week, the first piece of that I was implemented and that is that your Google Drive can now manage the photos that you put up on Google Plus. So, so you don't have to be posting your pictures to the stream in order to have them online. Lots more to come. Lots, <laughs> lots more to come. All right, what's up? Are you ready for my beginner's lesson? I think so. Let's okay, get right into okay. it. Then we'll switch over to this. And the beginner's lesson today is about taking the pictures from your phones and putting them onto your computer. And it was one of, it was the main article in our newsletter this last month. So if you go to geeksontour.com and recent posts, you'll see our March newsletter right there. Or if it's sometime later, you click on newsletters and you'll see the list of all newsletters. Or if you just want that article, you can click on all articles and you can find the article about transferring pictures to the computer. So pictures from phone to PC and read more. So if you read that article, you'll be getting pretty much everything that I'm going to show you now. But when I wrote the article, I said, boy, I sure would like to show people this. And I'd like to show it to them with a live camera and a screen share. And that's what this show allows me to do. So I'm going to start with the iPad, as usual. And first, I'm going to show you, oh, wait, wait, back to the slideshow, sorry. <laughs> I have a couple of slides to introduce it. OK. Go ahead. And. Oh, and you didn't wouldn't do the gotta laugh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Anybody I, believe that? <laughs> I fixed it. Kind of silly, but awfully cute. Okay, so beginner's lesson. Yes, make sure to take a look at the newsletter article about this from March, March newsletter. But there are two ways to get pictures from a phone or tablet. Same thing. When I say smartphone, I'm including tablet in that. So you can either do it wired or wireless. We love the wireless way of doing it because Dropbox is just makes it automatic and so easy. You take a picture with your device, it's on your computer. iCloud does the same thing, but for Apple products and Windows only. Android is not included in iCloud. So therefore, I say do Dropbox, then you don't have any, any limit of your devices. So I really like that way, but you need a lot of data. You need a good internet connection, and you'll be using your data if you do it that way. So wired is an option. And what that means is taking the cable that came with your device, plugging the one end into the device and the other end into the USB port and then transferring. And those two things I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you Dropbox and the cable. But there are other ways. Wired could also mean just with a manual device, not necessarily a wire. And we have that cool little dual USB drive that we showed you last last show. We're going to show it to you again this show. And if your phone or tablet has a micro SD card, then it's really easy to transfer to the computer. And I will show you that. Wireless could also mean a sh short distance wireless with um, either Wi-Fi 
or Bluetooth or NFC. You've probably seen those ads where they just kind of bump the backs of phones together and it can transfer pictures. Well, we're not going to show you that. I actually haven't ever used that. You know, why? It's but <laughs> <laughs> but it does exist, and that is also wireless. Okay, so now let me go back over. All right. And start with the iPad. So first, instead of saving the best to last, I'm going to show you what I consider the best method right off the bat, and that's with Dropbox. Hopefully you watched our show the last couple times, and you know all about Dropbox in general. But this is a special feature of Dropbox, and it's called Camera Upload. So first, let me show you the setting. In my cloud group, I have my Dropbox. And in Dropbox settings, down here in the lower left, there is Camera Upload. And it is on, but if I tap on it, you'll see even more options. And they include whether or not you want to use it at all. So camera upload on or off. I have it on. Then, if you want to use it, but you want to avoid using it with your cellular data, you can turn that off. So you can turn use cellular data off. And then, assuming you're using an iPhone or an iPad with a data contract, it will not use the data contract. But you know, that doesn't help most RVers <laughs> because their Wi Fi is probably provided with a jetpack, which is cellular data. <laughs> right. Very often, travelers like us are using our cellular data as our main connection to the internet. Right? Yeah. But if you do have a house and a regular unlimited Wi Fi available, then turning off use cellular data and just using the camera upload feature when you're on that Wi-Fi is a great option. We happen to have unlimited data <laughs> on our grandfathered info. I am okay with using cellular data. And I also like it to do it without my interfering, so background uploading. Okay, so those are the settings. All right. Now back to live. Now I want to take a picture so you can see how it works. So I'm just going to take a picture, Jim, and just so it's very obvious where the picture came from. He's going to hold this sign saying, this picture taken with iPad. Oh, very nice. Except that pink clashes with your hat. But, uh. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So now I want to take you back to Dropbox so you see what's happening. And Dropbox, so a picture was taken with this device. Dropbox camera uploads was on, and it says, oh, yep, yeah, there is a picture that needs to be uploaded, that little red badge. And we can see up here one picture is being uploaded. Now, that is being uploaded to the Dropbox in the cloud but also to any device, any computer that has Dropbox installed. Right, it's being a little slow there. Just one picture should have gone zip, zip, zip. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it, it knows that we want it to go zip, zip, zip. And so it's, you know, normally we're out and about taking pictures and Behind the scenes, every picture we take is being uploaded. And if at home our computers are on and online, by the time we get home, all our pictures are on the computer. And ready to work with. OK. So we're doing something new this week. And I'm going to show you the iMac as well. Since this is an iPad and we have an I, an, a Mac, we're going to show you how Dropbox would work on there. So this should be all you can. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. OK, we're looking at the iMac now. So the this is the, the iMac, iMac screen. 
and Dropbox is installed. Now, how did I get Dropbox installed? I just went to the website dropbox.com and said install Dropbox. And what I get is this little icon in the upper right and notice that something is happening right now. So that means the picture that I just took with the iPad, there we go, JPEG has been added. Click to view. Well, I wasn't fast enough, but now I can double clap, click. <laughs> I'm not using tabs here. Double click on the Dropbox icon and it should open up the Dropbox folder. Uh, that's right, um, this one on the Mac, I can't double click. I have to click on the folder icon. So I click on Dropbox and then I click on folder. And it takes me to the Dropbox folder and now there is the camera uploads folder. And if I go to showing, there is the picture that I just took with the iPad. I like just, I so love that way of getting pictures from our mobile devices to the computer. I just have a hard time even showing you other ways <laughs> <laughs> because that is just, you don't have to think about it. Once you have it set up, it's done. As long as you have internet connection. Internet connection. So there, sometimes you don't. So I am going to show you the cable way next. After just one comment though, so back to the iPad. Okay. And people will say, well, I use iCloud. That's fine. It's doing the exact same thing. It's just going to an iCloud location on your Mac rather than the Dropbox. And I also do have iCloud turned on. Uh, in my on my Mac, there's iCloud, and iCloud Photos is on. For me, then, what that means is every picture taken by this Apple device is being uploaded twice. Oh, great! And downloaded to the Mac twice: once into Dropbox, once into iCloud. So, which one should you use? Well, if you are completely in the Apple world, then iCloud is fine. Realize that it's in a transition right now. I mean, iCloud Photo, notice it says beta. So there's, there's some changes going on in the Apple world. But if there's any possibility that you will have a, an Android device in your mix, then Dropbox is the way to go because Dropbox will get the Apple device stuff it will also get the Android device stuff. Great. So that's, that's my advice. Okay, so now what if you don't have an internet connection all the time so you don't want to use Dropbox or iCloud? First of all, make sure to turn them off because they will be active if you don't. Then what you do is you get the cable. So the power cable that came with your iPhone or iPad, you probably realize, but just in case, the part that plugs into the wall, you pull that out, that's USB. So you plug in the part that goes into the iPad into the proper spot. And then you plug in the USB into the USB port, which on this computer is in the back. And the first time you do this, there, you will get a message on your iPad saying, you just plugged me into something, should I trust this computer? After you've done it the first time, it trusts it the next time, so, you, so you're good to go. But Now a bunch of things might pop up. In my case, Dropbox pops up. But no, I don't want to use Dropbox for this, so I'll click Cancel. iTunes also pops up because I could synchronize the iPad by tapping on the little iPad icon up here. But I also don't want to do that, so I'm just going to 
quit iTunes. What I want you to see is that with the iPad connected to the computer, it's like a camera now. It's like connecting a camera and you can use either iPhoto or Picasa. Which do you think I use? <laughs> I bet you use Picasa. I bet I do. Uh, so I can open up Picasa and it will see the iPad as a device to import from. Come on. All right. So this is the Picasa import screen and I click on the down arrow for import from and there is Chris's iPad. And it takes a while because I have what? A bunch. A thou over a thousand <laughs> pictures on this iPad and Picasa has to read them all first before it can allow you to choose which ones you want to import. But point being, once you have the cable connected, then this is like any other camera. You can use whatever import procedures you're accustomed okay. to using. Great. Okay. Was that everything I wanted to say about that? Yes, it was. And I'm late, <laughs> as usual. Now let's go to the Android. All right. And I'm going to... I'm going to close this out and are we done with that Mac now? Yes. Do some more. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, who knows? I mean, don't turn it off. Okay. I'm but <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now on the Android and Dropbox, I want to show you the settings first. And on the Android, the settings are under the three dot menu. So I tap the three dots and settings and there's all sorts of settings. Here's the camera upload. It says turn off. That means it's on. And how to upload? You can choose Wi-Fi only. I choose Wi-Fi or data plan. Okay, so now I want to take a picture. Or here, you take a picture of me. Uh, okay. Wait, what? yeah, sorry, you don't know where my camera is now. I, moved, I, moved <laughs> I bet it. you I could find it. <laughs> I moved it. <laughs> All right. So Now let's do it this way. Ready? Okay. Smile. <laughs> that was the voice-activated voice camera, F, in case you didn't know. That's a quick tip sometimes. Yeah, well, we have done it already, but no reason why we can't repeat That's some of true. the best things. I love that voice activation thing. Yeah. Okay. So back to the Android and let me show you Dropbox and pictures and it says waiting for Wi-Fi. I must have changed that setting unknowingly. So, so, but good point. If you make it so that it only goes on Wi-Fi Oh no, I know what's happening. That's an old video. So it's stuck at that video because I said, because it can't do that big of a file. Why for our data? Use data plan only for files under 25 megabytes. All right. But I think it went ahead and did the picture anyway. Let's see. So yes, there is both the picture that I took with the iPads. Here, there's another thing I love about Dropbox. It collects from all your devices into one place. And there's the picture I took of me. Okay, so now let's go to the Windows computer and the Dropbox folder. And notice I'm just in Windows Explorer here. Dropbox is just a folder like any other folder and there is the camera uploads. And there is the picture that Jim just took of me with the Android device. 
Now you might ask, why are there so few pictures in here? If you're always transferring from your camera, why aren't there 1,700? Well, because I use Dropbox just as a temporary transfer device. Once Dropbox has done its job by putting the pictures on the computer, I move them to the My Pictures folder on my main computer. And that clears them out of the Dropbox camera upload and frees up your space a and lot. And that's where they belong anyway, that's right? That's where they belong, is in the pictures. But in the pictures on my computer, I'm not going to do that on any of the other computers. Because <laughs> you want to collect all your pictures in, onto one computer. But Dropbox is the easiest way to get them on. I think so. All right. But if you don't want to use Dropbox and your internet connection, then how else do you do it with the Android? Well, same thing. The power cord that came with it is a USB. And you plug the other end in. Oh, and just another little FYI. If you all have the Galaxy S5 like I do, and it has a big, a, a, like a two-part connection at it's the bottom. It's a USB 3. Yeah, USB 3. Connected. But it doesn't, if you have another cable that didn't come with this phone, but it is a USB, a micro, micro USB. USB. It can just plug into that part of it. Works just fine. Yes, it does. OK. And then you plug the other part into the USB of the computer. Hub. In this case, a hub, because we ran out of USBs. <laughs> so you plug it in there. And now something will pop up on your computer screen. In this case, it says CD Drive Verizon Mobile. I tap on it, and it says I could import photos, or I could just open a folder to view file. But there's one other step before that that I want you to see, and that's on the, on the phone itself. When you plug it in, it says that it was connected as a media device. Touch for other USB options. And media device would work fine, but if it doesn't, the camera PTP, and that just makes it look exactly like a camera to the computer if you choose that option on the phone. And on your phone, it might be a different set of options. So this is a place where you'd have to research on your exact phone. All right. So now the phone is just like a camera being plugged in. I can go to Picasa. You want to maximize that? And use import. Oh, okay. That's fine. And notice that Samsung SM G900V, which is mine, is what pops up. But this is going to take a while because, as I said, Picasa needs to actually read in all the thumbnails. And I have 1,700 pictures on here. So I'm not going to use Picasa. The camera shows up just as any other drive. So notice it says Samsung right here, just in Windows Explorer. Then you need to know whether the picture is being stored on your phone directly or on the card. Mine's on the card. And DCIM. What's that stand for? Digital Camera Images, images, I think. Digital Camera Images. So that's the folder that you will usually always, I think, find pictures in. So DCIM. And then there's still more choices. In my case, Camera And it still takes a minute, but they load a lot faster in Windows Explorer than they do in the Picasa import. So I can I just. That. That's how I usually do it myself. Yeah. Now, all of this presumes that you understand files and folders. Very important on whatever computer you have. Be it Mac, you need to understand the Finder. On Windows, you need to understand files and folders. 
but this is how you get your phone to just be another media storage device, just like an external hard drive right. or like a thumb drive. Then you would find the pictures you want, copy or cut them, and paste them into your My Pictures folder. Okay, so that is via cable. There's still two more ways. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's always more than one way to do all There's of this There's still stuff. two more ways. So I'm going to, so I close down everything, and I can unplug this. I can unplug the phone cable from the computer. Now, on this phone, I actually have a micro SD card. And that's where it's, all I have to do is take off the back, and once again, on this phone, it's very easy, and that reveals the SD card. Now, you don't want to just unceremoniously tear it out of there. Probably not a good idea. <laughs> you should either power down the phone or go into your settings and unmount the card. So I go into settings, and this is all in that article, by the way, all in the our March newsletter. Cool. And storage and unmount SD card. Unmount SD card will stop some applications. I've, I've done this before. I know, I'm pretty sure anyway, <laughs> that it's not going to affect anything that we're working with right now. So I say, okay. Right. Now, one thing is if you have a lot of applications that you've moved over to that SD card, those won't work when the SD card <laughs> That's is right. out. So That's right. What, what Chris normally does is she keeps all of her apps on the phone by itself and then only keeps her pictures and videos on the SD card, right? Well, yeah, maybe that's what I should do. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a few apps. Okay, so now, now that it's unmounted, we can take that card out. In some devices, I mean, in one of my tablets that has this, you have to kind of push it in. It's spring-loaded. On this one, though, you just pull it out. So there's my tiny little SD card with 32 gigabytes of storage. Just That's unbelievable. Crazy. But now how can I put that into the computer? There is no slot in the computer the proper size. Well, that's what the little adapter is for. Whenever you buy one of these micro SD cards, you get a standard adapter SD. with it, a standard SD adapter. So I put that in there. Now this can go into the camera card slot on your computer, either PC or Mac, and it's just like taking the card out of your camera. So you're all set. Yeah, and we even have an adapter that is a USB that we can put the micro SD card into. Oh, yeah. And it goes put into it in a USB. USB. So if your computer does not have an SD card slot, you can use another kind of card reader with a USB. And that works pretty good, too. But speaking of USB, this little device we also showed in our last episode, but it is just so cool. This is a USB, a flash drive, a USB drive. It has 32 gigabytes? Yes, 32 gigabytes. It has 32 gigabytes of storage in it. It is a USB drive. It will plug into the USB of any computer, but look at the other end. It is a micro USB. So I can plug that in to my phone in the, U in the micro USB slot, and now I have an external drive attached to my phone. And on the Samsung, you have a file manager. On other Android devices, you may need to download an app for a file manager, but on the Samsung, there's this thing called My Files. And we should mention that this particular dual USB flash drive does not work on all devices. It does not work, for instance, on my Nexus 7 tablet, but it does work on our Samsung tablet. So, you know, try it. 
And can. it absolutely doesn't work on any on an iPhone or iPad because they do not have do the not micro allow, USB. And they don't allow that kind of stuff anyway. They so. don't allow that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so here it is. And with the My Files app open, notice I have the device storage, the SD, and the USB. Woohoo! So now I can, I could go to my pictures on the SD card copy them and paste them onto this. Or, as in this case, this is Jim's thumb drive and he has copied some videos to it. Yeah, I copied all of the videos from my phone to that SD card, so now I can transfer those over to my computer and take them off my phone. And I can even just plug in his USB drive into my phone and play one of his videos. Be careful. You never know what those videos <laughs> are going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's noisy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, wow. to, re to review, yeah, wired or wireless? The wireless is absolutely the easiest, but you need an internet connection. For wired, you can do it with a cable or with the SD card or even a thumb drive if you have the right, the right devices. Phew! <laughs> okay. I think it's time for me to quickly, or maybe I should make you do it. The Lunar <laughs> Eclipse app is an app that I installed over here just this past week because we had that beautiful lunar eclipse that was supposed to be happening early in the morning yesterday and so I downloaded this Eclipse program for free and it told me that the Eclipse was going to be in I think a half uh, or a half an hour anyway it was wrong the app was absolutely just wrong and and it was uh, I didn't know what to do so because I, I looked it up on the internet, I googled it, I made sure that I knew what time the eclipse was going to be and this app was wrong. So what do you do when you have a completely wrong app? Well, I think you should uninstall it. So <laughs> that was going to be my app of the week, so we want to uninstall it. How so do you uninstall it? In instead, it's a tip of the week. <laughs> it's a tip of the week, great. Now this is on his home screen. If I touch and hold, I get a trash can up at the top for remove. But has that uninstalled it? No. When you just remove it, it just on an Android device, it just removes it from your home screen, wherever it happens to be. It's still in your all apps. So you can go to your all apps now or find it in your all apps and do a long press on that. And now you have an uninstall at the top on my device. Right. If you don't have an uninstall, then you go into the Applications Manager on your Settings, so go into Settings and go to Applications Manager, then find that Lunar, or Eclipse, I'm sorry. Mine are probably... I think it is Lunar. Is it Lunar? Okay. Yeah. Lunar Eclipse. There it is, Lunar Eclipse. Click on that, and then up the top you have uninstall. So there are three different ways of uninstalling this app on my Android phone. If you are on an Apple device or an iPhone or an iPad, when you drag that icon to the to the trash can, you are actually uninstalling the app. So just so you know. You know, is if you on the iPad, you touch and hold until they wiggle and you get an X. When you tap that X, you are uninstalling the app. Right. Not not just off your and off you your have home to go screen. back to the App Store in order to put it back on your iDevice. Right. right. Wow. Okay. You think you can find the? We've covered a lot here. We have yeah. covered a lot, and it's time to quit. I Were think. Were there any questions? I did not see any questions. Did anybody okay. have any questions? Everybody's eating Easter dinner. Yeah, they're well, not watching us. Well, <laughs> if they are watching, they're watching already recorded. All yeah, right. So they'll watch us later. Okay. But do like us on 
on Facebook. Yep. Did you learn something? <laughs> I always learn something. I so, learn that so Chris I. talks <laughs> and teaches and well, teaches. Well, I and just teaches. I just try to cover more than a half hour's worth. <laughs> <laughs> well, true or false? The USB cable for connecting the phone to the computer is the same as the phone's power cable. Yep came right with it. You have a USB cable. Okay. If no message pops up on the computer after plugging in the USB cable, look for... A message on the device. You know, there's two pieces that have to get along, and there can be a message on either one. So, for example, on an iDevice, it will say, trust this computer. And on an Android device, it'll say, what type of USB connection do you want me to be? All right. The geek's favorite way of transferring pictures from phone to computer is to use... Dropbox Camera Upload. <laughs> Love it. And we have plenty of videos on that one. Yeah. And what's one reason not to use a wireless method for transferring photos? If you're on a metered data connection that you have to pay for, this is going to use a lot. Pictures use a lot. Okay. And before removing a micro USB card from your phone, you should either power down the phone or use the storage settings to unmount the card. That word mount, that is an old, old computer term. Yeah. Yeah, you used to have to mount disk packs. <laughs> <laughs> Fun facts You're to old. No tell. I am <laughs> old. And what type of device does iCloud not work with? Android. So it does work with with Windows. I mean, my I, I do have an iCloud My Photo stream that's automatically populated on my Windows computer from the iPad, but it does not do anything with Android. There's no iCloud app for Android. Therefore, use work. Dropbox. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So what's the web page that lists all of our weekly shows, Chris? Geeksontour.com and a menu item for a weekly show. And what's the web page that lists all of our recent newsletters? Geeksontour.com and the menu item is blogs and articles and you'll find newsletters at the top. And what benefits do I get by joining the Geeks on Tour? Number one, access to all our tutorial videos. Number two, asking questions on our members Q&A forum. And number three, the written show notes for each of these What Does This Button Do show. Those are really valuable nowadays because there are so many. We're up, this is our 34th episode, and if you're interested in something, you can go to those show notes as a member and just go directly into the piece of the video that explains that. You right. Know, you know, you're saving bandwidth and you're saving time. Yeah. <laughs> So do become a member at geeksontour.com. Just go to our website and become a member. Next time, we're going to do the beginner's lesson on Google Now. Huh? Google Now, yeah. Uh, it's, it, they keep, well, Google changes every day. Yeah, it seems like every time we do one of these shows, something's different. Something's new. Yeah, something's new and different. But, but Google Now is, is just amazing how it is becoming a true personal assistant I, yeah, I really like it. And we'll have a quick tip in an app of the week and uh, your questions. Leave your questions in the comments either on our event page at Google Plus or over there on the YouTube page. And watch for notifications for next week's show. Be sure to click that you're coming. And please leave any questions in there. Let's see. I have a couple of questions here. Let's look at those real quick. If they told me if I upgrade to 4G, I lose unlimited data, so I'm grandfathered with 3G. Oh. Yeah. Well, hmm. That's a tough one, Chuck. That's a tough one. I would not want to lose my grandfathered. Well, how much data do you use? That's a good question. But you should also realize that if you did go to 4G, you will use more data. It, it just does. Because it goes faster, you use more, even if you do not change your habits. So... Uh, whatever amount of data you're using now for 3G, let's say you're using 10 gigabytes, figure on 15, maybe even 20 if you go to 4G. So It does use a lot more data a lot quicker. So I, th I, yeah, you know. I would probably <laughs> keep the 3G and maybe just get another phone. That's what we're thinking about doing. 
We're yeah. thinking about getting a, another phone on a T-Mobile right. just to have another plan. And we might very well get an iPhone we this might. time. We might. <laughs> How about that? All right. Let's see. I learned what a DCIM is the acronym <laughs> for. Well, don't trust us. <laughs> digital computer, digital camera image. Digital camera we, image, I think. I'm pretty we're, sure. We're pretty sure of that. All right. So that's it for another week of What Does This Button Do? And we are the Geek Song Tour. I'm Jim. I'm Chris. And, and we'll see you next week. From wherever. Keep pressing those buttons. That's the way you learn. It will not blow up. Probably. Probably. <laughs> Just keep pressing those buttons. Figure out what does this button do?